What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my Insect Lay build for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Now, IG is in a fantastic place. We have uh, improved aerial game with the Kinsect Slash being able to snipe specific spots coming from the air. On top of that, we can actually chain that to come down straight into our combo. This is really fun, actually. But you rent Kinsect Slash, and then you do the Enhanced Insect Spiker, and then from there, you're already in your combo, which is nutty. Uh, on top of that, we have the Kinsect Yeet, we have the Kinsect Glide, a new movement ability that's arguably superior in every way to the old one we used to have, and we have new Kinsects. So there's really nothing to not like about IG right now. On top of that, full extracts, of course, give us tremor and earplugs like it did in the olden days, so it is in a really good spot. Now this build is stacked. Attack Boost 7, Agi 5, Whisperer, Crit I 3, Crit Boost 3, Wax 3, Windproof 3, Stun Resist 3, Free Meal 3, some Resentment, a little bit of Razor Sharp, some Bloodlust, some Chain Crit, and then even some Utility with Quick Breath. It, it's all here, baby. We are rocking, and a big thing that's fun, 15% uh, Affinity, 15% Affinity, 50% Affinity, and of course, for those that don't know, we get 20% from Bloodlust. So while it is situational, we can hit 100% Affinity when this build is firing on all cylinders. Now, before we go into the build itself, I want to talk about the Kinsex because there's two that are, it's honestly gonna be up to you what you wanna use. We have the uh, assist type, the new assist type with the boosted powder extract, or we have the powder vortex Kinsex, and both of those are pretty cool. Now, the way that this one is gonna work is after you do a number of Kinsect assisted attacks. So, not this, not this, but this. See how the Kinsect flies around with my IG on that? Or when I do the dash, you'll always see the Kinsect come out. Another one is a uh, Petra Seal Slash. But when you do enough of those, you're going to create a cloud on the monster. And what's fantastic about this cloud is anytime you go through it, you replenish your essence. So going on in, boom, full essence. Which, as you can see, has obvious synergy with the Awakened Kinsect attack, because I can throw it on out, get a punch of damage, and then I can just jump through that cloud to instantly get back all of my extracts. And if you play this right, you can effectively maintain your extracts throughout the duration of an entire hunt. Uh, now, one of the things that's going to make this really easy to do is going to be that Tetra Seal Slash. Because as you notice, that automatically marks the monster. And when you are doing those attacks, if you are hitting areas that have already been marked by the monster, or if you're hitting marked areas uh, with your Kinsect Assisted Attacks, you'll see that bubble is already on up. Whereas if you're just going out and you're just straight attacking the monster and you're trying to go through, like, say, the infinite combo, you could do this infinite combo for days, that cloud is just, it's not coming. You need to be getting those Kinsect assisted attacks. So, big things to keep in mind there. Uh, now, as for the other Kinsect, the oh-so-fun Powder Vortex, the way this guy works, and there's two, two all versions of this. There's a Paralysis Heal and a Blast Heal. This is the Blast Heal, but the idea is once you mark, your Kinsect's gonna attack, and as it attacks, it's gonna create alternating clouds. Typically, well, with this one, at least it's Blast Heal, Blast Heal, Blast Heal, Blast Heal. And you can get this up a couple times. So, you know, it'll do that. Your Kinsect's gonna come on back, Stamina's gonna go, and then we're gonna send him out again. Oh, yeah, I hit the monster, there we go. And it's just gonna do these clouds. And then whenever the time is right, you hit the right trigger, you're going to hit Y and B, and it's gonna group all those clouds and it's going to explode them for a bunch of damage. Now, on top of exploding them for a bunch of damage, if you're nearby, you'll also receive the healing from the green clouds. But the big downside to this build is in multiplayer, your teammates can also pop those clouds, which means you can't vacuum them on up and do your big boom. So while I am a bigger fan of this play style, uh, ultimately, I feel that assist is superior simply because of the case of the, the situational nature of the powder vortex. Um, but anyway, that being said, uh, last thing, let's, let's talk about Kinsex Biker real fast, just because this is really good. When you are in air, if you aim it with your right trigger, that is where you're going to go. So you can aim and, 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 you know, snipe specific spots with that. Keep in mind that you can extract essence with this until you get a red. So if I did not have any essence right now, I could hit the stomach. Boom, that's going to give me orange. I could hit this to get white and then I could go for the face and I could get my red. But once I get red, you can't extract with that anymore. Um, so anyway, all that being said, let's jump in, talk about switch skills, talk about the build. 
Now, as for our switch skills, uh, I have Advancing Round Slash, Kinsect Slash, and Kinsect Glide on both kits. Uh, Advancing Round Slash, honestly, I think it's just straight superior. The fact that we can basically do a counter with this when it comes on out is super useful to me, whereas we can't with Leaping Slash, so I always use that. Uh, on this kit, I have Tetra Seal. On this kit, I have Tornado. Now, I really like Tetra Seal, but it is very high commitment. So if I'm fighting something that's moving too much, I'm going to switch over to blue and use Tornado. Now, as for Kinsect Slash versus Jumping Advancing, uh, technically speaking, Jumping Advancing will do more damage going through the full rotation. However, anyone that's ever used it before knows that 90% of the time, you're going to get bopped out of the air before you can do it three times. So... Well, I like it. Unfortunately, Kinsec Slash is just way faster. On top of that, the fact that once we have our red extract, we can dive right in with the enhanced insect spiker and go immediately into a combo. That's just more fluidity with the weapon. As for here, we have a couple options. Awaken Kinsect Attack, which is our big yeet. Diving Wyvern, of course. I have that on the blue kit for wake-ups. And then Recall Kinsect, which previously was seen as useless. Now, not too shabby if you are running Powder because you can use this, and as you see, its stamina will fully recover as it returns, and stamina depletion will be reduced. So this will actually give your Powder Consect more time out on the field to apply Powder. Um, all that being said, though, I, I really like this. There's just something super satisfying. It's a huge opening. I get smacked in the face a ton when I'm using it, but I still just keep getting drawn into being like, eat, and just launching my Kinsect through the monster. Uh, as for the last ability, Kinsect Glide, honestly, this is just, this is better in every way. Uh, this is literally, I've, I've never used Silk Bind Vault. I'd always just jump with my Kinsect. Uh, Kinsect Glide, this still lets you fly out. You don't go as far, but this is going to aim for a marker. Or it's going to go where your reticle is. If it aims for a marker, it's going to, as you can see, your Kinsect comes in contact with the monster, absorbs the extracts. So you can use this to get extracts and keep more uptime on the monster. Or you could use it for evade if the monster isn't marked. Um, now... All that being said, let's talk about the build. And the first up is the weapon, the Crimson Spring Wing. Now, obviously, Valstrax being uh, MR70 is quite a ways away, but once you get him, this pretty much trounces the competition. You know, Insect Glaive chews through sharpness. This has a massive amount of white on top of the 340 attack, level 2 deco slot, and level 2 rampage slot. Uh, before that, you have a couple options. The Crab and Toner isn't too shabby at 330 with a chunk of white and then a level 4 slot and level 3 rampage. The final boss one's also not too bad, having all that purple at 350, but some negative affinity. If you want something that's kind of in between, the Gore, obviously this one's only at rarity 9, uh, but the Gore IG I really like. This thing looks pretty sweet, so I used that for quite a while as well. Uh, some other ones, those are all old. I wouldn't use that anymore. That's dookie. I was using this for a bit. I just liked how it looked. Uh, but yeah, so eventually you're going to get this. Hands down, that's going to be what you want to work with. Now, as for the Kinsex, um, and this is something that I heard talking to some people, apparently between, well, so while Blunt obviously can get KOs, hitting the face, especially with the enhanced Kinsex attack, I've heard that the Severing type, the Exalted Alucanid, actually can pull from the Dragon element that's on this. And because of that, it just allows it to do more DPS than the Gleam Beetle. Now, I don't actually know how true this is. This was something that uh, some people were mentioning on the forums when discussing Insect Glaive. I don't even know how to test that, to be honest. But if it's true, that would make the Severing type just outright superior. Um, so either way, I'm using him for now. You know, it makes it easier to get tail cuts and whatnot anyway. But so moving on down to the gear and the decos. We have a tenderizer in our weapon, and then of course in the rampage slot, use the appropriate ante for whatever you're fighting. Kaiser Crown, picking up three crit eye, a crit boost, and a sweet, sweet stun resistance three. Moving on down to the Arc Fiend armor, two points of wax, resentment, chain crit, and some attack boost. The Lunagaran braces for three points of agi, and then some attack and sated slotted in. Of course, a point of wirebug whisperer there for us. Rathalos Cloyal with a crit jewel slotted. We have two attack, three windproof, and two crit boost. And then the Stored Greaves. Slotting in two agitators gives us the Bloodlust and two agitators. Now, perhaps one of the best things about this is this build is talisman independent. As with all my builds, of course, I have a god tally here. With three attack boost, three wire bug, three one one in the slot configuration. However, you don't actually need this. Uh, if we go and look at our skills, even if we take that, you know, let me just do it. Let me take off the talisman. Even if we remove the talisman, 
You have add G5, attack boost 4, crit I3, crit boost 3, wax 3. We still have the utility here. We lose some points in free meal. What did he do? Um, and we still have a point of Wirebug Whisper. So even without our Talisman, this is still a super stacked build. So you can really run whatever you want in your Talisman here. You know, you could go for... Uh, you could go for, for more wire bug if you wanted to do the wire bug. Or make it. Uh, you could go for the attack. If you don't like agitator, you could just put raw crit in there. So you don't need to worry about agitator being active. Um, another thing to consider. So with this build, initially when I was putting this together, instead of the store greaves, I was running Arc Fiend, which has more slots available. And of course, we get dereliction. Um, and on paper, I mean, the mathematically, that's going to just blow it away, you know, because we could pick up another... Uh, 10% crit right there. Just straight raw crit. In fact, you can, you can pick up 10 crit there, swap these out, and take your crit eye all the way up to 7. Um, but the big downside is I'm a big fan of aerial IG, and I found that a lot of the time I'd be in the air, dereliction was active, and I'd get smacked by, like, the webbing on a wing or something, and then suddenly I'm at, like, 30% health and I need to panic heal. So, ultimately, I didn't feel comfortable really running Dereliction with the Insect Lave. There's a lot of weapons I do feel comfortable running it with. IG just wasn't one of them. So, I went to the next best thing, the Storks. Obviously, you could just be, you know, you could go for the good old standard Ingot. Just pick up straight attack and crit boost. That's uh, another pretty safe bet that you can't really go wrong with. Anyway, for our hunt, we're not going after anything too Well, I shouldn't say too dangerous. It's not an anomaly monster. Uh, but we are going after a big boy. We are going after... There he is. The King of the Crumbling Castle. A.K.A. the King of the Sky, Rathalos. I don't know when it started, but I feel like every time I do an IG build, I have to fight Rathalos. I think it's, you know, because Rathalos is like, it's the King of the Sky. He's up there. But I'm actually the King of the Sky. Well, I mean, technically speaking, if you've never seen a Gunlance user blast their way across an entire level, you could possibly argue that they're the real king of the sky, but we're just gonna... Well, we'll talk about Gunlance in the next build video. For now, Insect Glaive is what we are talking about. I still think my favorite... Like, this is a fun build, but I still think my favorite IG build was back in uh, an Iceborne when I took the Safi set and I made a 100% crit IG with Master's Touch just for the fact that I didn't need to worry about Wex and I could just spin to win in the air and do a massive amount of damage and I constantly crit so I never lost sh uh, sharpness. That was fun. That was still, this was like, that was just, oh man. Such an incredibly satisfying build to play. Hey buddy, I got a blast toad for you. Do you like that? All right, let's get some extracts real fast. I don't know if I mentioned it, but of course the uh, uh, Sunbreak IG we get we get full earplugs. Oh god, I'm dead. Oh god, it's your bug. Uh, Sunbreak IG gets full earplugs and tremor resist when you have all of your buffs. So obviously that's fantastic. There's no reason to not. coming too. I sure was talking a lot of shit at the start of this video for getting bodied by Rathalos. It's alright, that was just, you know, I wanted him to feel confident about himself because I knew what was about to happen to him. I wanted to give him a small chance to, you know, I had to give him the first round. He had to take take the picture, send it home to mom, be like, look, are you proud I beat the IG user? And then he's going to turn off his phone and we're going to curb stop him. No! Oh, you little shit. He's flying away.
literally just up here. You're actually getting like really annoying now, Raph. I can use this to launch.
Ooh, yeah. Missile sharpen. Get in the trap. Get in the trap. There we go. Boom and boom. Oh, not bad. Another 1006 hunt, probably. That, ah, man. That opening, that opening card, though, that. Mm. That opening card got me. I was like, oh, God. really? <laughs> Talked up all this good game. And I mean, if you want to be more comfortable with this, of course, you'll lose a little bit of DPS, but you could always work in a Malzeno coil. Um, as you saw, we got pretty good park breaks there. So, uh, 1032. Um, you could certainly do it, you know. Obviously, you're, you're going to have a little bit less damage, uh, but it's always an option. Personally speaking, with, with Insect Glaive, I feel like if I need to heal, it's pretty easy to, to back out. And on top of that, IG quicks very sheathly, so or cheats very quickly, so I've never felt a, uh, a huge need to have stuff like Blood Knight. Uh, but either way, up next we are going to be doing the Gun Lance build, one of my favorite weapons. So stay tuned for that, and I'll catch you all in just a little bit.